on here. So uh, a lot of things I'm going to talk to you about um, I've done over the years. A lot of these things you're probably doing. But the one thing Tony does uh, that is absolutely accurate on it is people leave a ton of money on the table. And I don't know about you, you must like cold call or cosmic. I hate it. And the more business you get out of a client, first of all, it's a lot easier after you. The first piece is always tough, right? Wouldn't you agree? That's the hardest thing to get. The second, the third, and the fourth is easy. Uh, some of the, you know, a lot of guys like this prospect. I'd rather go link that electric side with a ton and have the prospect all the time. So let's talk about the exciting thing about backbinding. Now, Tony Donahill, they built you a backbinding. How many of you guys actually have a backbinder on all your clients? Okay. You ever been sued? Backbinders save a lot of guys. Uh, you're number one. So I guess from a, a liability standpoint, I would suggest you have. But Tony's got one here. It's got all the hard data that you're going to need on the client where you're going to make your sale. I would encourage you to use this. I would encourage you to do one thing that they don't have on here. Put a yellow sticker on it. Because Tony's absolutely right. Let's say you have a client that has a million dollars of investments. You walk out and you sold 250 annuity. You're happy. You made a lot of money. You left 750 on the table. I would put opportunity on that sticker, and then when you don't have clients, go back to that file and pick that up, because you'll know where the money is. And when you know where the money is, sales are a lot easier. And I'm now I'm going to talk to you about a lot of things here that not are uh, deal with the hard facts. It's deal with how to position yourself, how to get the information out of the client. Alan uses a great thing, having a conversation. And I'm going to share with you a lot of things we've done over the years. Anybody know who that guy is? Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh. Successful football coach. Wouldn't y'all agree? Yeah. What was he noted for? Anybody want to know? West Coast, West Coast offense. He won three Super Bowls. There's only four coaches that have won three or more Super Bowls. So he's an elite at winning. Something I found interesting, because I like to find out with people how they do things, but can they take that and duplicate it to other people? He's got 31 coaches in his coaching tree that have gone on to be head coaches in the NFL. So you think what he's done, what he, his process has been successful? It's duplicatable. Seven of those people have gone on to coach in the Super Bowl, and five have gone on to win the Super Bowl. So he does something right. He has a well-known process. Now, you all said the West Coast offense. What's he really known for, though? What did he start doing as a coach before anybody else did this? And now it's kind of everybody does it now in the NFL. What did he do? What was he known for in the first quarter? Scripted 10 plays. Bingo. He scripted the first 10 or 15 plays. It didn't matter what was going on, Montana, whoever was the quarterback, these are the 10 plays you're going to run. I don't care what's happening. The reason he did that is he wanted to find out what the other coaches were going to do, what their defense was set up to do. He wanted to see if that guy was having a bad day, maybe, maybe that injury. How can he take advantage of it? That's what he did. He was known for that. And he always, those first 10 or 15, stayed the same, never changed. You know, if you take that philosophy and kind of go to your own business, what does your first meeting look like? Do you guys have a formal process? Maybe it's not written down, but do you do? Do you ask the same question? Yeah. Good. Because that's really I, I have a lot of producers who call us up and get into a meeting, and I got to pull stuff together. That's a train wreck waiting to happen. Because they're not organized, they don't know. They're trying to sell something in that first meeting, and I got to tell you what, consumers today, that's those days are probably gone. Uh, they're, they're leery of institutions, they're leery of advisors. Uh, uh, for, and for a lot of good reasons, and, but they're just clear they want more information. So trying to close on that first meeting is probably not the best uh, road to success. So I would ask you, what did your first appointment look like? And I want to share with you just some questions that you're going to be able to get a lot of information out, and then take that information and turn it back into the sand. Uh, people don't make decisions based on their facts, do they? Uh, is how they're going to be impacted. So that's what we want to kind of get all that information. And uh, so 
so you can start creating more sales. Yeah, so first five or ten questions. This is the areas you want to cover. You want to walk out. You want to make sure, get family history, because everybody wants to take care of the family. We're going to show you how to do that. Health issues. Does it make sense to sell somebody uh, a life insurance or make a proposal to them if they have, you know, a lot of major health issues that you don't know about? I mean, do you think Dunhill folks at Dunhill would want to know that, be able to help you if you had that information? We'll show you how to get that in a conversational manner. Attitudes about money. What is your attitude about money? Some people are very conservative. Some people are real risk takers. I think a lot of producers think all their customers are really conservative. I'll be talking to you a little bit later on, and I'll show you some data that says that's probably not really the case on here. And then, Coach, what are the personal wants? What are they trying to do? I mean, we talk about retirement, you know, all the TV commercials, you know, oh, you're going to build a, you know, get yourself a vineyard, you know, or do something like that. You know, legacy is uh, based up in Petaluma, which is a wine country. And there's a saying up there, you know, how do you make a million in the wine business? Start with two million. Uh, don't make it. That's tough business to make money. So, so let's talk. Let's get those first uh, those first questions. Let's talk about family history first. Make sure every question has a purpose. Family question. This is the question we use, and I got more data off this one question uh, than probably any of my other questions here. And it was this: you know, we sat down, we talked to him, you know, told him what I did, met him at a summer or whatever. I've got the first name, last name, and all that information on the husband and wife. After we kind of got all the greetings, the first question went like this. Are your parents still alive? Now they might be 60, 65 years old. And they like that, you all. In many cases, they would answer yes. They are still alive. What does that tell you that in that family? Now? What's going on in that family? Longevity. longevity. You have a product that might be able to help them with longevity. Called the new, we have income ladders that can take guaranteed income. So they say yes. Both my parents were in their 90s. I want to kind of bounce that here a little bit. Other one is how old were they died? If they died young, I mean, maybe in the new, you might not be thinking you're going to try to sell them. More importantly, though, is they're still alive, how is their health? <coughs> this is where you start gathering data. You know, mom, mom's got diabetes, you know, dad's getting Alzheimer's, or they're in great health. My next question is, do you have any of these health issues? Now you're starting to get that information, that medical information. Because, you know, at the end of the day, DNA kind of, you know, we take out our parents' issues uh, health-wise a lot of times. So now you're getting more and more information. What was the cause of the death? And all that information, you can just write down. You're going to be able to take it back if you want to maybe run a uh, disability case or you're running a long-term care case or a life case. And you'll be able to start sharing some of this information uh, with the Dunhill folks. And they're going to be able to get, advise you on maybe the best product of which company we ought to go to if the client has this information. Is that not threatening, though? I'm just talking about the parents. Are their parents still able to live alone? Many of them are nursing homes, right? Now, we love to have statistics in our business. So, you know, 35% of the people, you know, are in nursing homes or whatever. This is the real statistic. My parents are in a nursing home. What's it costing you every year? This is a very real number, right? Uh, they get, they understand the cost. It's not a case you're talking to somebody who's never experienced that 75000 a year. They're in the nursing home. They understand it. Someone's paying those bills. So you can have a good conversation about that, how they're paying for it. Uh, and now, if you know they have a lot of health issues, and you know you'll never be able to get them a long-term care policy, I know like so we have income riders that enable, if they go into a nursing home, we can double their income. Again, you're taking now that information of client when you go to make the sale with the customer. Make sense? On there. Do you guys do a lot of this, drive down sales? Ask more questions. Okay, let's talk about just family questions. Is your child's marriage in good health? In good shape, I should say. Is the marriage in good shape? 
Why would you want to know that? Yeah, right. You don't want to give it to the nasty ex-in-laws on there, do you? Uh, people want to protect themselves. So now you can have that opens up another conversation with the customer. And now you can start taking your products, you know, through an annuity, through a life. We can make sure that evil daughter-in-law doesn't get the money, or that evil son-in-law won't get the money. Uh, but you're helping them protect their money, helping them protect their family. Here's a question I, uh, we started using, and I probably sell, I mean, the premium doesn't sound like a lot, but every year, fifteen dollars to $30,000 a second to die life. Any of your grandchildren or children have special needs? And the reason we started asking this is, hey, there's a lot of people out there that have this situation in the family. I ran into a couple, they had just retired, they had a son who was special needs, wasn't able to take care of himself. They were struggling in their retirement years not to spend money because they wanted to make sure their son had enough money to take care of them. And there were no parents did they loved their kids. And they had another daughter, so they were struggling with this whole process. They didn't want to turn them over to the state at the upon their death. And I said, you know, why don't we look at getting you a second to die life policy? got one for $750,000, I think it cost like $7,000 a year. They were relieved. Their problem has been resolved. They can now spend their money for, uh, much more freely because they know their child's going to be taken care of when they're gone. There's going to be enough money in there. We started asking this question in every meeting because I said, you're going to be surprised how many families have a special needs child and they want to take care of that child. And like I said, we'll sell two to three second of life policies every year. So if you're looking to get into the life business, if you don't sell a lot of life insurance, this is a great way to get yourself in. It's not a, a complex a, a state tax situation. It's a rather simple sale. You gotta get a lawyer involved if you want to put into an irrevocable trust. It's a straight sale. Folks done help you help you with this real easy on here. And you know, guess what? You make a lot more money on this. But more importantly, it's solve the problem. Yes. To do that, you would have to make sure that not an irrevocable trust, but a special needs trust, because the benefit cannot go to the child if the child is receiving any type of government assistance. It has to correct. You are correct. That's why you want to get a lawyer. You, absolutely. Thank you for clarifying that. But you want to get a lawyer to draft that for you. But it's not really. It's not a complex issue. Uh, the lawyer will draft that up to protect the child. Uh, on there, but you solve the problem for the parents. Yes, sir. I've, I've drafted a lot of these uh, special needs trusts uh, and life insurance trusts. And you're absolutely right. Done properly where it goes to the trust and not to the child right. individually, then you're in good shape. And it's pretty easy to do. It's not really, it's, it's not heavy lifting from an attorney standard right. on there. So you turn it over about 24 hours. Right. So, I mean, imagine you go through the same planning, you got the CPA, you're doing all this stuff. It becomes a lot more complex. And not everybody really wants to do that. They want to take care of their kids and their grandkids. But I will be surprised. Just ask that question in every one of your interviews, and you will uncover uh, a lot of potential. And you know, you'll end up getting referrals. So a lot of times, these people belong to groups, and then they refer. I mean, it's, it's uh, so. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get referrals and not have to feed them a chicken dinner, and you know, get in front of some more folks. There. So that's a, that's a great question. But you know, as you go through, you feel free to use these questions. But more importantly, make sure you've got your own question scripted. Is this your first marriage? Now you might say, Frank, this is a bizarre question to ask. No. Uh, first of all, I, I asked him before, because uh, when I go to make my clothes on my life insurance or my annuity or whatever, I don't want this issue to come up when I can do the beneficiaries. Because what I have discovered over 30 years, I used to be six foot six, had a full time hair when I started, <laughs> but I've discovered that on the second and third marriage, or fourth marriage, Somebody comes in with money, and the other person doesn't have that much money. They both have kids. The one that has the money wants to leave the, his kids the money. The one who doesn't have the money thinks, well, we're just going to share it with everybody. And do you really want that issue coming up with the beneficiary when you say, who's the beneficiary? Uh, no. <laughs> you the, they start fighting, and all of a sudden, whoa, 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 lose my sale here. So make sure you know if this is the first, second, or third marriage. <coughs> 
you'll save a lot of sales. Any questions? Do you guys have any questions you'd like to ask? I'm not sure if I'm going to draw that for a marriage thing. I've tried to find out a terrible way, and I found that the best way is to choose you. You seem so happy. My gosh, you must have been married all your life. They'll show down the corner, and there's no offense taken at that time. Right. Uh, you, you don't want to offend anybody. Uh, I'm a big believer in not nibbling around the cookie either. Uh, I have a little sign on my desk, if you don't take my advice, I can't help you. And I kind of view myself as a doctor. You know, I, I do ask people questions. I, I think it's a non-threatening question uh, on there. And I think, you know, so many people today have you gone through divorce, you know, people, percent of people are divorced today. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty common. But what's not common is how you can take care of the, the attitude on how that money is going to be distributed. That's a, that's, a, that's a big problem right there. And on there. So you don't want to get into the sale, made it, and everybody feels good, and then all of a sudden this issue comes up. Oh, no, 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 our kids are going to share equally. No, 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 no. <laughs> Blood is thicker than water. Yeah. Attitudes about money. This is always good because you got, uh, you run into them, you're, you've got everything filled out, and I like kind of test the water for them. And what I ask them is, this is a real straight question, why did you purchase this product? Now, a lot of people can't answer the question. They don't know why they did it. That's good. You can help them. You, know, you go in, you see people that got 57 mutual funds, and they think this is diversification. I think they're collecting mutual funds myself. Uh, you don't need that much diversification. You're buying and selling against yourself if you look at it. Uh, so get the questions. Find out what their attitude is, husband or wife. You're going to get that analytical guy in there, and he's going to be able to tell you, does this, and does this, does this. He's got a well thought out process, that's great. You're gonna find people saying, well that's kind of why I'm here, I need, I need help. Great, we'll get yourself, we'll get you organized, we'll get it all straightened out, we'll get a rebalance, and off you're running again. But you'll find out uh, a lot of information on what the, how they think about money. You know, a lot of people like, you know, I was kind of talking about, you know, I put all my money in the bank because I'm safe. Well, that's not probably the best way to go. Or I'm very conservative. I don't want. I don't want to take risk. You know. I always ask them. Tell me what risk is. Risk against what? Losing principal against inflation. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of different types of risks that you, uh, you need to ask that client. You always have to be challenging uh, to have to answer that question because the more information you get, when you go to actually make the close, you can bring all this to this back in. Now you told me under your meeting uh, that your folks are in the nursing home. You got longevity. I mean, this is the problem. I mean, we, this product will guarantee you a lifetime income if you experience the same issues going into the nursing home. We have a double on that. We can't, you know, health pay books. We can't get you all term care insurance because of your health issues. So again, more information you have, the more sales you're going to make. <coughs> Personal ones. Get down there. You know, here's how the reality of retirement goes. If people retire. And probably in that first five to seven years, that's when they're going to spend the most money. They're, they're healthiest, you're not getting healthier. It's not like wine, you get better with age. I mean, you know, stuff starts to break down. So they're going to be doing their big trips. Maybe kids are getting married. Maybe they want to take their grandkids. Get all that information. Write it down. You have their assets, and now you can start making the recommendation. We can take these funds, and it's going to help you, you know, that special trip you want to take. Special family events. You know, any large purchase you're going to make, are you going to get a second home? Do you have to put a new roof on the house? It was funny, when my grandmother, my grandfather died, and my dad went, went up there, and uh, she lived in Pennsylvania, I grew up in Atlanta, and uh, she needed a new roof. And my grandmother, and this is back when you could buy like a 10-year roof or a 20-year roof or a 30-year roof. And my grandmother goes, I just want a 10-year roof on my new roof. Now, the difference between a 10 and a 20 and a 30 wasn't that much. My grandmother was a depression child, so she was tight. So three roofs later. <laughs> so I mean, it's uh, they have this mindset. I mean, it's uh, and you got to get them through it, all that. I mean, you got them all gym. That's why I like to personalize things because we have a great uh, love for statistics in our business. But I think the best statistic is what's going on in that family. If you have longevity in the family, you're going to have longevity most likely. I mean, I think I heard one time, if you live, you'll statistically live five to seven years longer than your parents. 
about that. It's a big issue. I mean, you could be retired 30 to 40 years. I don't care how good you are with money. Stuff's going to come up. You need to, you need to increase your guaranteed stream of income to protect them. Health issues. Kind of go back to what you were saying there, uh, Richard. You know, you look good on the inside, and on the outside, how are you feeling on the inside? People will talk about their health on there, but it's not threatening. It's not like you've got this life application in front of them, and you're asking, now they're kind of nervous on there. Because what you need, when you have this information, go back to Dunhill. Go back to Tony's group, the life, you know, Dr. Harrison. He can help you design a case to present to that customer. Why not go in with more information and increase your odds of getting the case? Nothing worse than doing a life case and you come back rated. And you, if you had known this information, you would have avoided that problem. Now you got to resell it. you got to resell a higher uh, premium, where if you presented that premium up front to them, it's a lot easier. So more information is better. But I would really encourage you to design 10 to 15 questions. Feel free to use these. I stole off of this, uh, but they work on here, and I, I do, you'll see your sales increase greatly. You're spending a lot of money to do marketing. You know, uh, Plum's program works. Yeah, Alan's got some great ideas, but it's not cheap, is it, Alan? Uh, if you're going to spend six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars, you want to maximize your return on investment on here. You know, you know, the gentleman over here, I think I said he got one sale on his Plum. He goes back and sells that client more products down the road, his return will even go up more on that on that mailer. So I would really encourage you to develop that those first 10 to 15 questions that are broad, general, and then as you get more information on what the client's gonna really wanting to do, you can start making your recommendations and your uh, closing ratio will go up. So you just walk in with a hammer, you know, everything looks like a nail to you. I mean it's a it's little tough. Any questions? Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and uh